Today is Thursday, the 25th of May, 2023, and a real important video to do here. Um, as many people may or may not know, we are currently looking to change our living situation. I own two different properties right now in the Patton area here in northern Maine. And um, we have land plus this house here in the town of Patton. And we've been looking now for a few years at the housing market and the prices that have gone up during the pandemic have just been shocking to say the least and uh, you know been looking into are the prices going to come down and you know just studying real estate and what I've discovered here is shocking um, I heard listening to different financial channels people talking about that there are home buyers that are selling the realtors and the sellers actually um, because of uh, price gouging essentially um, and here's a, a, a businessinsider.com article more home buyers and sellers are suing real estate agents claiming they were misled about the value of their homes January 5th 2023 you get into the article here and it goes down into saying that uh, now that home prices are starting to decline across the US uh, I thought that Dave Ramsey and others like him have said that the house prices aren't going to come down. They are. But uh, because of a soaring economy. No, it's a crashing economy. A growing number of recent buyers and sellers are feeling more than regret after exchanging keys and leaving the closing table. Um, in the past year, there has been a steady rise in lawsuits being filed against agents, brokers, and other real estate professionals as both home buyers and sellers try to recoup their lost home value. Zach Volmer the Senior Vice President of Real Estate at Victor Insurance Managers Incorporated, a global underwriting firm told Insider. You get down through here um, and basically home prices are dropping and people are saying, hey, I paid too much for my house. And they're actually suing. Well, how could they sue? Well, because of price gouging. I mean, just do a quick Google search for price gouging, definition of price gouging. It says here, price gouging is the practice of increasing the prices of goods, services, or commodities, housing is a commodity, to a level much higher than is considered reasonable or fair. Now think about this for a minute. During the pandemic, house prices soared. Everybody talked about this. People were paying more than uh, asking. They were getting uh, asking price. They were getting into bidding wars and things. People were saying, I want this house, and they'd offer fifty thousand dollars more and somebody else would say I'll give you sixty thousand dollars more it was crazy not only were the prices inflated but people were paying above the asking price um, and you had other people that were in homes that they were not having to pay rent they didn't have to pay their mortgage payments this never happened before in history it was a huge housing bubble that was created during the pandemic and why was it created well, if you go here to laws against price gouging, it takes you to this Wikipedia thing here, price gouging. Um, it says price gouging is the practice practice of increasing the prices of goods, services, or commodities to a level much higher than is considered reasonable or fair. Usually this event occurs after a demand or supply shock. Everybody had to get out of the cities and get away from areas where there was a lot of disease and things like that. This commonly applies to price increases of basic necessities which housing would be, after natural disasters. The term can also be used to refer to profits obtained by practices inconsistent with a competitive free market or to windfall profits. Um, in some jurisdictions of the United States during civil emergencies, price gouging is a specific crime. Price gouging is considered by some to be exploitive and unethical and by others to be a simple result of supply and demand. Uh, well, there is such a thing as a simple result of supply and demand but when you're talking about insane levels of price gouging then it becomes a definite exploitive and unethical practice All right, let's just go down here um, United States in the United States state laws against price gouging have been held as constitutional at the state level as a valid exercise of the police power to preserve order during an emergency and may be combined with anti hoarding measures um, we'll see about that here in a minute. As of March 2021, 42 states have uh, emergency regulations or price gouging statutes. Price gouging is often defined in terms of the three criteria listed below. 
here's where it's very important. Period of emergency. The majority of laws apply only to price shifts during a declared state of emergency or disaster. Pandemic. Necessary items. Most laws apply exclusively to items essential to survival, such as food, water, and housing. Housing. Right there it is. Price ceilings. Laws limit the maximum price that can be charged for given goods. Um, but it goes on to say here uh, that there was basically um, some things that were passed during 2020 and also into 2021. A lot of these laws are trying to protect people. Uh, what was it about? Well, here you have Law 360. Price gouging rules e-commerce to collide at 6th uh, Circuit Court in Kentucky here. And you get into the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But this uh, Kentucky Attorney General D Daniel Cameron's appeal of a June 2020 preliminary injunction blocking him from pursuing investigations or cases against Amazon retailers could serve as an important bellwether for would-be enforcement actions springing from the pandemic. All right, um, what's this about? Well, um, here you have the American Bar .org, American Bar Association, pretty high up there in terms of uh, law and order and things. The federal response to hoarding and price gouging during the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, and you go into this whole thing here, and you get all the stuff about um, due to the lack of com comprehensive federal legislation addressing price gouging, the government turned to the Defense Production Act of 1950. And it goes down through here and it's talking about basically the personal protective gear, the, the face masks and other things like that. The people were hoarding it and then price gouging. They were going and they were buying up huge amounts of it and then they would sell it on eBay or some other place like that and charge a much higher price. That's price gouging. You can't do that. And so there's all this attention on that uh, in this article here. But what about the housing thing that was mentioned back here in this um, right there? Housing. What about the housing market that was blown completely out of proportion? Let me show you a couple of examples of that. And it still is here. Uh, and which I think, you know, homeowners suing the uh, real estate agents, I think, is a good idea um, because they they were just absolutely lying. And I'm going to show you some proof of that. Look at this right here. You have this house that's for sale here in the area here in northern Maine, um, sold in 2019 for 210,000. And here we are, nearly four years exactly later, and it's 525,000 dollars. Um, how does it go up that much money? Um, well, you say, well, inflation. Inflation's going, well, inflation, I think it's the worst they were saying is 8%. That's not an increase of 8%. Uh, I would call that price gouging. All right. Um, I'll show you another one here. Here's a place, an off grid cabin in the area, sold April 2022 for 27500 A year later, a little over a year later, 138000 Huh? <laughs> and one I know of in particular, this one here, 53 North Road. It's a uh, pretty decent sized property. It's a has a little airstrip and everything else. Uh, hangar pizza right outside of town here. And um, tax assessment, 2021 at 183900 Now, I can't find the original ad. Um, but originally it was with First Choice Realty, and it was 725000 I think is what it was. And it was interesting because I was in the post office, and the owner of it, she was in the post office as well. And she was talking about, uh, somebody said, oh, I saw you put your place up for sale. She said, you know, what are you asking for it or whatever? And she said, oh, $725,000. And she said, oh, it's not worth anywhere near that. Then why charge that much? Because the realtor came along and he said, I think we should try to get as much as we can. Uh, wouldn't that be price gouging? Wouldn't that go against the law? Assessed at 183900 and yet we're going to get seven hundred twenty-five. dollars Absolutely crazy. And again, uh, here's the listing. It was put up for sale in 2012 for $235,000. Now see, that's... A, that's 
I would say fairly you know, close to being fair. I mean, put a little bit above the tax assessed value, 183900 sell it for 235 Okay, I can see that. But here's an old ad right here. Um, Realty of Maine, they're the last ones that had it for sale. $625,000. They closed. It's not, I don't think it's sold. It's just that they closed the, the ad down. But how do you go from uh, listing it in 2012 at 235000 there's the tax assessment right there, 183900 Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can make sure people can see it here. Right there it is, 183900 235000 but now somehow jumped up to 625000 Crooked. Absolutely crooked. Uh, let me just show you something here, what we have recently. If you go to Redfin, and they hide the tax information. It's pretty incredible. But you go to Patton, the town that we are in right here, and this place here comes up for sale. And um, 399500 It's a garage, ironically run by a man named Stephen Anderson. Not the same Stephen Anderson, the cult leader, you know, new IFB cult leader. Different guy. Um, I've had a lot of work done on my different vehicles, getting tires and things like that. They do a really good job. He's a nice guy. But uh, look at the, let's go down here to the tax history. Okay, you see the price. The price is 399500 that they're asking for this. Tax history, look at the assessed value. That's a tenfold increase in price. It's 399500 but the tax assessed value is 39400 Am I, I mean, am I missing something here? And you say, well, yeah, but you know, Ron, you're so dumb. You know, you, you don't sell places for tax assessed value. Well, actually, um, this place that I'm sitting in, I bought it for less than the tax assessed value. And my property that I bought, uh, my land that I have, um, I bought that for less than the tax assessed value. So, no, it's not unreasonable to say that, you know, tax assessed value, that has no bearing on the price that you should get for it. Uh, well, I guess if you live in Nuttyville, that you know anybody can go get a mortgage and you know come out with new 40-year mortgages to make the payments lower and things and and scam people and say, well, we'll do a Fair Housing Act, I think is is what it was called, and for minorities, they won't have to put any uh, money down and everything. Why are you trying to enslave them? Put them into overpriced houses that's price gouging, and put them into 40-year mortgages knowing that they're subprime, knowing that they're going to default. But hey, if you can make some money off of them. See, the whole housing thing has gotten so out of hand, and you have liars like Dave Ramsey coming out and saying, it's a great time to buy, the housing market's strong. It's a complete, total scam. It's a lie. It's price gouging. So, I could show a lot more examples. I mean, I've seen people buying houses just for insane rates. Um, and you say, well, I bought a place during the scamdemic, and I'm wondering if I paid too much. Well, what was the tax assessed value? Uh, fair market value, I mean, you have to consider that stuff. And if you were ripped off by a real estate agent, if they ripped you off and did price gouging and the seller, you might want to look into some kind of legal action on that because there are laws against price gouging. I showed you the proof of that. You're not supposed to price gouge people during times of emergency. And that's what happened. During the pandemic, people were price gouging in housing, not just with personal protective gear and whatever else, uh, and toilet paper and things. It was with housing. I mean, that's the big elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about, but it's right there. It was wrong. It was bad. And, you know, again, oh, well, this is, I think it's a, a good thing, you know, $400,000 for a place that's assessed at 39400 Okay. Will the taxes be taken up to reflect that if it sells at that price? Do you realize how big the, the property tax thing would have to go up to? If you took this thing and did it tenfold, the price is tenfold from 39400 to 399500 Take it up ten times that? So, um, 
if you're looking for a house, if you're in the market for a house, don't even think about buying a place that's inflated like this. Check into the thing of the tax history. The uh, you know a lot of these ads that you look at on Redfin, they won't show you the tax history. It'll just come up and say, oh, we don't have this information, or we'll put this up later, or something else. Uh, a lot of realtors are scammers. Uh, made right here. I'm just showing the proof of it. So really do your homework. Don't get caught up into the fear of missing out, the FOMO thing. And, oh, I have to get a place. I just have to have it. I'll pay anything for it. You're foolish, especially if you're going in with a, a mortgage, which most people do nowadays. Um, you go in with a mortgage, you're going to be paying. Uh, you'll be upside down in your mortgage. That's what is happening here. They're uh, you know, regretting paying so much for their homes, and now they're realizing I'm paying for a house that's worth more or that's uh, worth less than what I originally paid for. You're upside down on your mortgage. You get underwater, as they say. Please be careful. There's a lot of scamming going on right now. Um, this housing market thing is horrible. I mean, I, I've i seen places. Uh, there was some place. It was a, a cabin. Again, a cabin had no land. It was just literally square footage. It wasn't even an acre. And no land. The place needed to be torn down. It was completely just a rat nest. It said it's a major fixer upper and all this. And yeah. And uh, $199,000. It's insane. And I've seen city people come here and they look and they say, wow, the prices are so cheap here in, in Maine, northern Maine. And wow, I'll just buy this place for some insane price. They don't even bother to check what the tax assessed value is. They don't even bother. What's the history of this place? How much did the people pay for it? Again, just to show that one place here. A few years ago, $210,000. Now they're trying to get more than twice that. This off-grid cabin, $27,500. It somehow went up $138,000 to 138000 in a year. How does that even happen? For an off-grid little tiny place, I'll just show you real quick. Go up here, 693 square feet, doesn't even have electricity. And it's worth that? Don't be scammed, brethren. Uh, the Bible says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The borrower's, borrower is servant to the lender. Don't become a slave to the banking system by getting a mortgage. That then they take your mortgage, and they call it a mortgage-backed security, and they put it into the stock market, and basically trade your mortgage around to try to make money and borrow money off of it and everything else. You're becoming a surety for a stranger. You have to understand these things. right? We need to pray hard that this housing market comes back to some kind of a sane thing. And we're literally, today, we are one week away from the dollar possibly defaulting if they don't come to a, an agreement to raise the debt ceiling. And if they raise the debt ceiling, that means more inflation, meaning groceries will be more. Everything, the cost of living is going to go up if they agree to print more money. And if they don't agree to print more money, then it's going to be a default of the dollar. You better have your, if you have money, you better have it out in hard, tangible assets, which I'll talk about here in another video. But uh, please be careful. Do not get a house in this market here. And if you've really been scammed, you might want to take legal action against the realtor and the seller. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.